Hi, my name is Mike Pavlakis. I'm a master baker and I started my apprenticeship in 1955. And my wife and I have owned and operated bakeries for many years, successfully. But of course we are now retired, but I'm still baking bread. If you'd like to learn how to make bread the way I do, then please keep watching my video. I'll now cut one of these and just show you what it's like. Look at that. Lovely and white. Not grey. No. I see some bread and it's grey and uh, I don't like it. But this is beautiful and white. So as I said, if you'd like to learn how to make bread like me, then please keep watching. Okay, we'll, we'll start making this bread. I've got a kilo of baker's flour here, good strong baker's flour. Twenty grams of salt. Ten grams of bread improver. I like using bread and bread, it makes all the difference. And 40 grams of lard. I like using lard, but you can use uh, margarine if you wish, but I, I find that lard is better. Now, I've activated 10 grams of instant yeast in 300 mils of water and a teaspoon of sugar. And as you can see, it's frothing up and it's nicely activated. So I'll just add that. And now I'm going to put another 300 mils of water. All together, that's 600 mils of water. And, and that should work out about fine for this flour. You may have to, uh, you may have to vary out it a bit. I'll just let that come together now and um, it should be right. Sometimes you might have to add a little bit more water. Every flour is different so you'll have to find this out for yourself. Um, but make sure you get strong baker's flour. That, that's the only thing I can stress. Uh, I like to get a protein level of about 12% and you'll find it'll be really good. You can uh, make the dough by hand if you wish. Uh, some people may not have a mixer. Well, make it by hand. But you've got to remember, you must really develop the dough. And it might take you 10 to 15 minutes to really work on it and develop it. But most people have machines these days, so why not use it? So I'll let this mix now for about five minutes. And then I'll come back to you and we'll see how it's going. Okay, I'll stop this now. We'll have a look at it. It's been about five minutes. And as you can see, that's come together quite nice. I'm happy with that. Quite nice. Yeah, that's good. Now, as I said, if you're going to mix it by hand, do it this way. Don't do it in two pieces. Do it in four, like this, if you're mixing by hand. And really get into it like that, and then put that one over there. Get another piece, roll it up, put it on top, like that. Get another piece, put that on top. Get another piece. It makes it easier doing it in little pieces. You're not doing it in one big, put them together, and then same thing, cut it up. And just keep repeating that process. And that way you can mix it uh, by hand if you haven't got a machine. But of course we're lucky, we've got a machine. So what I do then, I cut up little pieces and throw it in. That way it incorporates better. So I'm going to do this probably, probably about four or five times. To, to really get it to come together, and then I'll come back to you, okay? 
Now this is looking pretty good now, so I'll just check on this. As you can see, it's, it's come together very nice. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I might just do it once more. Just do it once more, and then it should be right. Just bring it together like that. It, it really helps to develop the dab. It does. You don't have to make a dough this big if you don't want to. You, you can cut the recipe in half. Just do 500 grams of uh, flour and, and cut the ingredients exactly in half. Okay, I'm happy with that. It's nicely developed now. Nice and clear. When I pull it apart, When I pull it apart, it's lovely and clear, and it's like a nice film, clear film. Keeps stretching and stretching and stretching, and you can virtually see through it. So I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is uh, put this in a bowl with a bit of flour over it. I don't use oil. I hate using oil because when you come to mould up later on, if there's a little film of oil over the dough, it stops it from all joining together. So I'm going to uh, put this in a bowl now and let it rise. And I'll see you in about an hour, an hour and a half. Here we are. Now that's risen up really nice. I'm happy with that. Uh, I'll scale it off now. You can see I didn't use oil and you don't have to use oil. Um, there you go. I will use just a little bit of flour before I scale it off. Now I'll scale these off at about 250 grams. I love these balanced scales. I see people using those little digital scales. I don't like them. I don't like them. I'm the old school. You know. You, you, you get that way that you can just get them the right way nearly every time. Very good. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now, I'm going to make viandas mostly. That's how I make viandas. Then I'll show you how I make them, the baker, and then I'll show them how you can make them. We Bakers get, use their thumbs a lot. They get their thumbs in. See my thumbs going in there? The thumbs doing the moulding. And then you get that lovely little torpedo shape. Okay. But of course, if you can't mould up like I do, or like bakers do, just do it this way. Just fold it over gently, and just keep rolling up keep rolling up, put a bit of pressure, roll up, put a bit of pressure, roll up, put a bit of pressure, and, and you'll get it nearly the same shape. Look at that, no difference. So you, you, all you people can do it that way if you can't mould up like I do. I'll do one more for you and just show you. Just start it rolling, push it down, roll it, push it down, roll it, push it down, roll it, and so on. And you get that little Vienna shape, which is fine. These two I'll do cobs. Now, because a baker moulds like this. See, a baker moulds like this. And that's how you get your oval shape. But of course, I don't expect you to be able to mould like that, but that's fine. Get the gas out of it and just bend it under. Bend it under. Bend it under, bend it under until you get a shape that looks like a ball. That's fine. You'll get away with that, I'm telling you. Don't worry about it. Now, this one, I'll make a little cottage loaf. This is how I make a cottage loaf. I just roll up that little ball. I'll put a little cross there. The reason I do that is so this will join up nicely 
like that. Then I put my fingers in the flower and push it down the centre. And that, that will keep it in place, okay? This next one will do a, uh, do a little plait on top of the uh, Vienna, just, just something different, just something different. So uh, just roll the piece out, just roll it out, that's it, bring it out, bring it out. I'll just run a little bit of water along the top and that'll, uh, that'll help it stay in place, it will sort of stick to the dough. So just come up and then just, just go around like that, just go around like that. Give a little bit of a stretch out and then you can lay that on top. Fold it under. Same on the other end. Just fold it under. And there you have it. I'll put a few little cuts in these. Okay, quite good. You don't have to be exact, you know. It's just whatever you... And that's that. So what I do, I heat my oven up to 50 degrees Celsius and then I put a tray of boiling water underneath. Um, because it's cold here now, it's in the winter time and it stops it from getting a skin on it and, and helps it uh, recover and prove better. So you can do that if you like, but that's what I do. So I reckon it'll take about three quarters of an hour for them to prove up properly. So I'll come back to you then and we'll bake them off. I'll put these in here now where it's warm. Uh, I warmed it up to 50 Celsius. And I'll just put some water in the bottom. This water is like a steam bath. That's it. Just put that down in the bottom of the oven. Now that will stop it from getting a skin on top and, and it will prove a lot better. So I'll see you shortly. Okay, now uh, they've proved up nicely uh, and they're ready to go in the oven. I've turned the preheated the oven to 220. So I'll just get these ready to put in the oven. Uh, I'll put some flour on a couple. I use a little sieve just to put the flour on and gently tap it. That gets makes it nice. I'll do this one too. There you go. You don't have to but this makes little things nicer. And we'll do a couple of Viennas with uh, sesame seed. I like to put a bit of water because the seed will then stick. The, will stick to the Viennas. It's a little bit of seed. Okay, there we go. Now, I'll put these in the oven and um, I'll leave them 25 minutes and then I'll turn them around. That way they'll bake even. Uh, every oven's different, but this oven I've found that I've got to turn things around so they cook nice and even. So I'll go ahead with that. just put them in. Uh, I preset the oven as I said to 220. I'll wait a couple of minutes and I'll turn the oven back to 200 and then I'll give them about 25 minutes and I'll swing them around. They're looking beautiful. There we go. And uh, another 25 minutes and we'll see how they're going. Okay, it's been about an hour, so uh, should be ready to come out now. Uh, I turned it around after 25 minutes. Look really nice too, I'm quite happy. Quite happy with that. They look really nice. We'll cut one here in a second. 
Now what you can do if you want to, uh, some people do, or I don't, but you, you can paint a little bit of butter on them just to give them that nice, give them that nice little gloss. This makes a little bit of difference, but of course I don't do that, but it, it does give it a nice effect. Okay, so I'll just grab one here. Ooh, very nice. And I'll cut one up, see what it looks like. Ooh. And look at that, how lovely and white that is, beautiful. So, there's no reason why you can't make bread like this. If you follow exactly what I showed you, it might take you a couple of times to uh, get it right, but I'm sure you will. So thanks very much for watching, and I hope to talk to you again shortly, because I will be putting more uh, videos up for you to look at and, and learn from me. Don't forget to hit the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Master Baker Mike, thank you all very much for watching.